Inspiring Body of Christ Church is an anointed ministry where we use the Word of God to win souls for the Kingdom of God. We are fishers of men and our church is uniquely equipped with the largest privately owned aquarium in the world. All of the marine life that you see in our tanks have to go through a time of quarantine. So here is a recap of our previous episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. It would be completely impossible. Let me talk about the sheep, where this, this scripture comes from in the Bible. It would be impossible, completely impossible uh, for that, that, that shepherd to lead his flock into a pasture where there were no wolves. You just can't do it. Now you think he's got 100 sheep. He's got 200 sheep. He's got a flock of sheep. It's impossible for him to lead them into a pasture. Please hear how important this is. It's impossible. It's impossible to lead them into a path where there will be no wolves, no wild beasts, no snakes, or any other enemies lurking around. So he prepares a feast for his sheep, knowing that all the time they've got to eat, but they are always on the enemy's mind. Yet he has to prepare them to eat knowing that where he is taking them there are tons of enemies all around them somebody please listen to what God is saying right now but if you watch those sheep they have no fear you know why because their shepherd is there thank you father And now, another episode of Quarantine with Pastor Ricky Rush. This evening, Father, we want to thank you for being there with us all the time. Lord, I want to say this evening, as we have prepared ourselves, those that are listening, we never imagined ourselves having full-time service in the place that you blessed us with to be called home, a job, or a car, or in the hospital, or wherever you blessed us to be today, God. But we make ourselves available to you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts through this word on this very, very wonderful night that we are here today. Some are making a supreme sacrifice and saying, God, I've never really attended a service like tonight, but God, speak to my heart. Speak to us. Lord, we just welcome you in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight, and thank you so much for being with us. This is episode number 120. And we are here tonight not by accident, but we thank God tonight that we are able to be here. Wow. Here we are still smack in the middle of thanking God in the midst of a time when it seems like you just have to find so much to be thankful for. But I want to thank every one of you tonight for your time in advance. I want you to, to um, as we go into tonight's message, I want you to be able to say, oh God, just speak a word to me. Speak a word to me. I understand that some of our hearts are heavy. I understand that some of our burdens have been heavy. But I also understand that now as we have grown into this custom of being isolated, that our hearts are being lightened and our burdens are being lightened because we are learning now to cast all our cares on the Lord. And we are learning right now that it is absolutely possible for us to carry every one of our yoke and burden and heavy laden to the Lord and leave them there. So tonight, let's see what God is going to talk to us about. I want to, I want to make sure we go into understanding because what used to be kind of difficult for me to understand or even to comprehend, and I'm sure so many of us, was God, how can we right now be in a time like this when we really need our church and we really need to be together and the enemy has so strategically orchestrated something to keep us completely separated from the people who motivate us and inspire us who encourage us and then we realize God wait a minute we are around that person who motivates us inspires us and encourages us it's been you all the time so thank you God now today we offer this service to you Lord 
And to those of you that are looking and that are listening and that are trying your best to stay focused, let me give you one good, good, good hint. Don't lay down. Okay, if you're laying down right now, prop yourself up if you can on the side of the bed or go stand out on the porch or stand in front of the driveway or stand in the garage or stand somewhere so you can focus 100% on this word. Because if you get too comfortable, the spirit of lullaby is going to come over you. <laughs> but not tonight. In Jesus' name, we're going to claim that you're going to be able to be blessed. And after this message is over, you're going to be able to say, God, I want to thank you in advance with my gifts, my love, my praise. And tonight... I want to claim in Jesus' name that tonight everything that was going different in your life will go correct. It will fall in place because you're going to learn tonight exactly what you need to do to open one more door so God can show you further what's on your journey. Let's go tonight, if you don't mind, to Psalms 100. Let's go to Psalms 100. Psalms 100, verse 4 and 5 in the Message Bible. It says something a little different here now. You know, with this time that we're living in and everybody has codes and passwords and, and you can, you know, you get your child a phone or an iPad and you can't even get in it because the child has the code and the password. And sometimes you have to almost argue with your own child just to get into the phone or the iPad to see what they're doing, the very iPad or phone that you're paying for every month. However, there is a password that we have that God has given us to go into him yeah and sometimes we wonder how can some people seem as if they know God and they seem to do all the God stuff but 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 it seems like they're just just a fool of Satan himself but let me tell you something you can be all around an iPad or a phone or any electronic device and you can seem as if you can act, activate it and, and know how to operate it but if you don't have the code to get inside you just have a piece and everybody can sometimes think that your phone and you with that phone is authentic but if you don't have the password, you can't get in. So let's see. This is actually in the word of God. Some of you may be thinking, they just had to make that up. It's 2020. It couldn't have possibly been in the Bible. It's been in the Bible since the Bible was written. Isn't it amazing how God tonight is going to reveal something to us? And I want you as much as possible to stay focused to this word. Psalms 100, verse 4 and 5, it says, enter with the password. It's right there in the Message Bible. You can go right now and look at it on your phone and see it. It just seems that if that was just made up. Enter with the password. What's the password? Thank you. And I could end the message right there tonight, couldn't I? Make yourselves at home talking trash? No. Make yourselves at home talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty. All generous in love. Loyal always and forever. Tonight I want to talk real quick from the subject, give out your password. Give out your password. I know it's, it's, it's a thing in our society. Whatever you do, don't give out your password. Because if people get your password, they can have access to anything in your phone, anything in your devices, anything you own electronically. But tonight I'm going to challenge you to give out your password. What do you mean give out your password? You just read it in scripture. The password, the password, the Bible said, I didn't say it. The word of God said the password is thank you. If anybody ever asks you, how are you connected with God? Just tell them I always thank him. I don't always feel like thanking him and thanking him sometimes doesn't even seem convenient. But if he says that's the password. That's the password. What do you know about passwords? You always try to find a password, first of all, that you can remember. <laughs> I remember having passwords that were so difficult. I'm trying to keep everybody else from remembering the password, and I forget the password. God said, I want the password to be so simple that anybody listening tonight can have access to me. God's not trying to hide himself, but the password, just two words, according to the Bible, the password is thank you, give out your password if you give out your password you will find out that somebody else other than you will have access to your father and God will be able to touch their hearts inspire them like he's about to inspire you tonight you have a chore and a job and a responsibility let me move forward with this you just this is how you are right now maybe pastor rush I just don't feel like I used to feel and I don't feel it like I used to feel it you've known the Lord for a long time and now like B.B. King said, the thrill is gone. I know I'm talking to you. I understand that. 
You, you said the thrill is gone. You, 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 you took it for granted that it would always be the way it was right after you gave your life to Jesus. I remember how church was. I remember how I used to feel. And God did such a supernatural miracle in your life that you were so enthusiastic that your witness was everywhere. You witnessed to anything that would move. You witnessed to the dog. You witnessed to the neighbors. You witnessed to people that you didn't even know. A couple of times you, you would witness to just uh, probably even talking to trees. You were so excited about it that you would walk up and down the street just praising God and thanking God. What happened? You knew God was real in those days. You overcame some things in those days. Before you surrendered your life to Christ, Remember, the whole church thing seemed to be like a bunch of foolishness to you. This, these people are crazy. They're brainwashed. They're just doing what this man says. They're just running around there, hollering and doing all that thing. And once Jesus came into your life, once you accepted him into your life, you knew that you were a different person. You, you didn't seem like it at first. You didn't look like it at first. But you knew you were a different person. You became enthusiastic in those days, you were enthused about being connected with the Lord. You looked forward to Sunday. You looked forward to Bible study. You looked forward to Monday. You were enthused. Now, let's look at this word enthused because I, I often talk about people being charismatic. And sometimes we would love to have, and if you'd ask me any other time in life, I would say, yeah, I would love to have a charismatic person any day over a person who's not. But sometimes a charismatic person is that person, when they're around, they make a lot of noise and their presence is known. And man, they can set a building on fire. However, when Satan gets ready to attack, he generally attacks people that are very charismatic. Because he knows that if he can take one person's fire away, he can take someone else's faith away. Because we love sometimes charismatic people, but what we would rather have more than people who make a lot of noise are people who make a lot of difference. So we're going to talk about that now, about that, not the charismatic part, but, 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 but the enthusiastic part. Let's talk about the word enthusiasm for a minute. Enthusiasm means to be inspired by God. Now, I love charismatic people, and I myself have been a charismatic person. I love being up and, and praising God and, and all of that. But you can be charismatic. People can be charismatic and never be inspired by God. You can be charismatic and be inspired by a fight, by a riot. You can be charismatic and be inspired by somebody else being done wrong. But enthusiasm means to be inspired by God. And I hope I'm not going too fast tonight. You came to the Lord and you wanted to serve the Lord in church. You shouted all the time. You ran probably more laps around the church than you did in the gym. You were, you were, you were enthusiastic in the extreme you are over the top. Now, some of you remember this. Some of you don't. Some of you are just there right now. You've just come to know the Lord, and you wouldn't miss a Monday school. You wouldn't miss a prayer meeting. You wouldn't miss a service for anything. But then there are others who've been there, done that, and said, now I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do when I can't come to church. And all of a sudden now you have this appointment with God tonight, and God is saying, I want you to remember that you still have the password. The password could be so simple that you just don't think you need it anymore. But you can be right in the place, right on the site, but locked out because you haven't used the password. What's the password? The password is thank you. Despite our best efforts, Despite the best lessons given at church, best efforts given to the, by the preacher to resurrect that old excitement now that you used to feel, somebody listening maybe, you just don't feel it like you used to feel it. The music ministry urges you to praise, urges you to worship God. And, and at a moment, it seems it's, it's even, it has to urge you to dance, dance like you used to. Make one of your dance. Before we started service tonight, Reverend Thompson and I were just sitting around the piano just playing some songs. And all of a sudden, we were saying, I just said to him, the song, if we started singing it right now, it would sound like it was brand new. And we were talking about how wonderful it's going to be when the choir is up singing again, when the praise team is up singing again. And, and for some people, it was back in one of those days, and now it may have seemed to have lost its flavor, but, but you just kind of stare at the music now and stare at the choir stand. And if you're in church, sometimes you just stare. And even right now, you may be even staring at the screen looking like a deer in headlights. 
be encouraged. Or I could say these two words, take heart. There's still hope for you. There's still hope for us. We got again, began with the basics that are outlined in the Bible by David. David, David said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. If you're going to go in, use your, do, 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 use your password. Do, 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 do. What's the password, pastor? Do, 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 do. Thank you. And when you say thank you, when you enter into Monday school tonight, if you just stop and we're going to stop in a minute and give you a chance to enter into service. I just came in. I started praying. I started talking. And now you started to listen. But what's going to happen when you enter in to this service tonight, wherever you are? Here's the password. Do, 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 do. Why don't you just say right now, thank you. And, 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 and then, and then, and then, and then, why don't you use what you need to use to get the password into the system? Why don't you lift your hand and say thank you? You see, you got to have something to put the code in. Your hand puts the code in and your mouth sends the code out. Come on now. I say your hand puts the code in and your mouth sends the code out. Has the devil closed your hand and shut your mouth? That's why church may not seem as enthusiastic as it used to be because you're not using the password. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you have put your password in everybody else. God is saying, this is personal tonight. This is a personal message between you and God. You got to go in with Thanksgiving. All right. So let's enter Monday school one more time with Thanksgiving. Hand up. Just one. You don't have to have it all the way up. Maybe you're driving. Maybe you're around some people. You can't lift it. Maybe you're, I don't know. But just lift it a little and just say thank you. Now, God said, now you're in. Let's talk. Some folk are so busy complaining and murmuring that they never really see God. You just don't see him. You, you can look around and, and everything you see is just a sign that God is still real. When, 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 when God sees you, and, and sees your thanksgiving and your praise and your enthusiasm over your life in Christ. There's no limit to what he won't do in your life. But he's got to hear the code. He, he's got to recognize the code. See, some, someone that's worshiping uh, uh, Satan or the enemy is not going to use the code to say thank you. And, and, and even if they use the code, they'll try to use the code without lifting the hand. They're not going to praise. They have to go through a form of it. God says, no, I will do things that you've never seen done in your life. Now, you have seen me do a lot, but maybe you enjoyed what I've done, but you don't have room for what I'm going to do because you forgot the password. In case you're just joining us now, the password is in Psalms 100. Four and five, where it actually says in the Bible, message Bible lets us know that we have to set the code, use the password, and the password is thank you. Before a lot of us gave our hearts to the Lord, even um, the slightest excuse for us going out to a party, or I don't know what people do, you know, parties, clubs, dances, I don't know, games. It, you just had the slightest cue that it was time to celebrate, and whatever you went, you went off. I, I mean, any time, even children now, if you get the slightest thing about going somewhere, the slightest hint that something is open, and you go, and you celebrate. Remember celebrating? You celebrate everything. People that celebrate, celebrate anything. Uh, the day after the 4th of July, two months before Labor Day, Groundhog Day, three weeks after grandmother's last 40th birthday, anything, singing, dancing, and sometimes people would just make complete fools of themselves for nothing. Now that you're a believer, and I want to talk to you for a minute, now that you're saved, you've started to come to church, and maybe, maybe church was just a different place for you now. We act a little dignified. Something's wrong with that picture. When the enemy had us going out, we were excited. Now that God has given us the code, doot, 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 thank you, to come in, we're too dignified. I'll say it again. The enemy gave the code to go out, and we're all over the place. Yeah, but God has given you the code doot, 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 to come in and say thank you, and we're too dignified. I want to say this to you tonight. God's looking for God pleasers, not people pleasers. 
See, our problem is that we care too much about what people think about us when we start to praise. We care too much about how we look when we just pray for no reason other than somebody dying or somebody being sick. We, we care too much that, that, that folk are going to say some things to us and, and we won't be able to defend our other brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord is looking for somebody who's going to get excited about him. When somebody needs prayer, when somebody wants to say hallelujah, you just say it. But you've got to practice it in private before you do it in public. i got a feeling that when we get back in church this next time around, whenever we have our soft opening or our hard opening or our grand reopening and the enemy stands around and says you can't go in church, I guarantee you that your praise right now, if you practice your praise right now, if you enter the cold right now and say thank you, Lord, you can drive by the church and say thank you, Lord. And you'll enter into his courts with praise and you won't be distracted. He's looking for some God pleasers. Not people pleasers. So quit living your life for people because one day they'll love you. Oh, my God, they'll sing your name, sing your praises, have you all over the place, have you up on this and up on that and want you everywhere. And, 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 and then the next day they won't even take a phone call from you. So if I were you, I would continue to make up in my mind that I'm going to thank God. Some people think that we are in, in, in the Lord, we're too emotional. I just want to talk about the code tonight since you're, since you're listening. And, and it used to be like, man, I just can't have church on no TV. And that, that is a difficult challenge. It is especially a difficult challenge when you're trying to have church on an iPhone laying down. Woo, hallelujah. What a challenge. So keep it on your iPhone, but get up. <laughs> Some folk think we're too emotional, though, when it comes to our praise. They just, they just don't know what the Bible says about it. And when you've been through hell and high water and some people are listening to me tonight, you know what that is. Others, you don't know what that is yet. You, you, when you've been through that, though, you stop caring about what people think. When you've lost everything you have and then God starts to bring it back to you, you don't care about what people think. You can be conservative all you want to be. But when you need a breakthrough in your life, you never stop praising him. And you stop worrying about what other people think because you are now praising God. Thumbs up, thumbs down, likes, dislikes, doesn't matter. Lord, I'm just going to use the code and thank you. Your spiritual enemy doesn't want you to get excited about the things of God. He's the happiest when you're kind of timid, faithless, or a complete captive under his pressure. Under his influence. Because when the enemy puts you under his influence, he will shut your praise down. God, on the other hand, wants you to, to leave whatever wilderness that it is you've been in behind and go after the land that he has promised you. In the Bible, we talk a lot about David. David was a, a little shepherd boy who had um, was forgotten about and, and, and overlooked as he tended the sheep out in the fields. But God noticed David's, watch this word now. He noticed David's enthusiasm. He noticed David's enthusiasm. He didn't notice David's friendships. He didn't notice David's anything, but he noticed his enthusiasm. And David had a thankful heart of overflowing praise. And it caused him to be promoted over his brothers. He never prayed against his brothers. He never went against his brothers. He just used the code. Do, 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 and thank God. You, don't miss this now. He just do, 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 kept thanking God. And I know that noise may be a little annoying. So what the preacher talk about Monday night? Do, 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 do. You're going to have a problem trying to explain that to somebody. Just tell him he used the code. Thank you. David used the code. And if you want to capture God's attention, you need to be enthusiastic enough to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In a time that it seems almost impossible to thank God, we might need to break the code again. And when he broke the code, the Lord moved on David's behalf. And I don't want to go into the story of David, but you understood that David was a shepherd, a little shepherd boy, and then he ended up being a king. And even though you have failed in the past, I'm talking to somebody right now, failure is never the end when you serve God. You just use the code. God says, I'll have another door open. The door that was open yesterday may have closed. <laughs> How did you get through that door? You used the password. What was the password? Thank you. Oh, yeah, you'll remember the message tonight because now this is a specific appointment between you and God. 
Ah, a lot of people around. There are no, no people in the building. I never imagined, I never imagined having to stand flat-footed before the people of God and not see one person in a building. And I've learned to thank God when there's no one around to thank God. Maybe you feel nobody remembers you or notice your talents anymore. Notice any of your potential. Your, 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 your enthusiasm for the Lord will cause God himself to notice you. And I think one of the greatest problems we have sometimes in church is that they don't notice me. They don't do, and it's all about this, and it's all about that, and I've got other talents, and I've got other gifts, and I've got other abilities, and I can do a lot of things, and they don't notice me. If you use the code, what's the code? Thank you. If you use the code, what's the code? Thank you, Lord. If you use the code, God himself will notice you. Maybe you have been completely overlooked because of your age, because of your skin color, because of your gender, or because you don't know anybody important. Maybe you don't know anybody powerful. Your enthusiasm for the Lord was going to cause you to move to the front line. I can't stand here and say I've known all these great people and all these great things and I've always had the right color, always had the right anything. But I've just always said, Lord, I just want to thank you and I want to praise you. And sometimes I've tried to play this person that just kind of sit way back and folks say you need to tell people what you do and show people what you do. And I said, I don't know how to show that. All I know how to do is thank God. And every time I thank God, it seems like God takes me to another level. And every time God takes me to another level, there's another devil at another level and I'm going, God, I don't know if I want to climb any higher. I get tired of these darts God I get tired of this fight I get tired of this struggle and he said but don't get tired of using the code because every time you say thank you I'll get you ready for the next level God notices you when you say thank you you know why people don't notice you when you say thank you because you're not thanking them now, if people need you, if people want you, if they want what you have, sure, they're going to say, they're going to notice you. But God says, I'll notice you because you use the code and you thank me. If you don't have what you would call a real exuberant personality, you should notice that there's something about enthusiasm that captures God's attention. And quit saying you don't have kind of personality that other folk have and and you don't get excited yes you do quit quit giving the enemy that hold in your life and quit, quit saying it's not your personality to thank God it's not your personality to praise God quit saying that please and get excited about the things of God Quit saying, well, I, 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 don't, I don't, you know that look on your face when you get something new or somebody gives you something, how you smile? See, that's enthusiasm. So you can get enthused. You can get excited. You don't have to act like everybody else acts. But just at, at some point in your life, say, God, this is what I have to offer you, and I want to give you this praise. He noticed David, and God called David with all the issues that David had. He said, this is a man after my own heart. And if you want to be blessed, if you want God to be blessed, then I'm going to say come to church or come to services and be prepared to be that blessing. You want people to bless God. You want God to be honored. Come to church. And what I mean by come to church, come right where you are right now. Whether you're online, whether you're in the house, and I know you're online, but whether you're in the house, whether you're in the garage, wherever you are, if you want God to be blessed, then you need to come and be that blessing. And every time this door opens and the word goes forth, you will find a lot of reasons and excuses and great excuses to not attend. But, 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 but if you just open that door and come on in and let him in, you can let him be a blessing through you. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's listening. Somebody's saying, so what are you doing this evening? I'm going to church. Y'all church open. It's open at my house. It's open in the word of God. It's open in my heart. You, you can do that. You can go to church and not be in the building. I can't go to church if I can't be in the building. You, you've gone to football games and we're not in the building and, ex and enjoyed every minute of it. The commercials that they took were not for the commercials. They were for you. 
You enjoyed it because you wanted to be there. And when you open and notice that the church is open at any time, please listen to me. Satan will tell you, stop going. It's not worth it. You can't support it. You're going to support God. And God's going to support his church. God's going to support his people. And it's the enemy's job to say, back away. So they will see that the word of God is not working. But that's a lie from hell. The word of God is working. David, David played a, David was, he, he just blessed God all the time. He just blessed God. David was this guy. Let me, let me tell you real quick. He, 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 um, he played an instrument and um, he played a harp. And, and the king, the king that was the king at his time, the guy was, he was just kind of, he was all over the place. He was mean. He would fight. He would kill people. He was just, King Saul was a mess. And he had a lot of demons. And David would have to play a harp just to calm him down. Calm him down. Okay. Whatever his instrument was, he would play it to calm him down. Sometimes visitors, I'm going to say this to, to you. The visitors that you could bring to church, they may find it hard to sit still during an anointed service when the music is playing. People are clapping their hands. Sometimes a visitor, a person that doesn't know the Lord, gets a little antsy and can't sit around and, and maybe get a little nervous and there's too much going on in church and I'm not really used to people being distracted. You know, unlike a concert when music starts and everybody's all over the place, but at church when people start honoring God, sometimes people get a little antsy and, and anointed music will stir up demons and it'll set captives free. It, 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 if, you, if, you will, if you will just give God a shout out, if you will just give God a shout out, Enemies will back off. Demons will back down. Sometimes your music drives other people away. God's music will drive demons away. And so David will play the harp and demons will start to leave King Saul. Why? Because David was enthused about playing. God inspired him and he, he would play music that would calm the enemy down. How could David defeat this giant that he fought? With just a slingshot, it, 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 it wasn't much. The, the power of praise helped David. The power of praise will help you. Now, you think you don't have much. Let me say that to you because I know how that feels. You may think I don't have much, but, but, but let me tell you something. Whatever the enemy is throwing in your life that's bigger than you, you can handle that. And if you can't, God can. So David had praise in his heart that, that, was, that exceeded his brothers. His brothers, I'm sure they all went service. They all went, um, let's just say they all went to church. You know, they all, they all prayed together. I, I don't know that. But they all prayed because their father was a praying man. And, and they, let's say they all went to Sunday school. They all went all that. But David took it a little further. When people went around, he still do, 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 used the code. When brothers and sisters of yours are not around, when pastor's not around, I'm asking you tonight, start using the code. Just if you don't know anything else to say, put your code in and say, thank you, Lord. Well, pastor, I'm not about to go in church. I thought the code was to enter into his courts with prayer. Everywhere you are, you into his courts with prayer. Everywhere you are, you in the presence of God. You can be just about to go to sleep and you say, thank you, Lord, and God will enter you into a place of rest. You don't need much to defeat depression. You don't need much to defeat difficulty. There may be a little child right now listening to this message. Let me say to you, little boy and little girl, if you have a hard time trying to feel important and you don't feel like anybody loves you and people don't care about you, I just want you, whenever you can, you know, you can ask your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uncles, aunts, just tell them, you know, I I'm, want I'm to do something that the preacher said do. I want to be able to, to, to get into a peace of mind. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to kill myself. I don't want to feel like I'm no good. How can I do that? And I'm telling you right now, if you want to do that and if you want want to feel great about yourself and never want to harm yourself just do 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 enter the code say two words you can lift your hand and say thank you lord you don't even know what else to say after thank you lord just say thank you lord and when you think about being healed and you think about your mind being right and you think about feeling good on the inside and you think about having the right words to say you can just say thank you lord 
I don't care how old you are. If you can speak and you're listening to me, you can lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. You can look at your mom, your dad, or your grandparents right now, your little brothers and sisters. Mom, dad, if you're in the room with your children, look at them right now and say, baby, let's practice letting God in. We got a lot going on. We got a lot on our hearts. We got a lot on our minds. We got a lot going on. But we got a God that's big enough to handle all of it. And just say to your children, say to your families right now, God, thank you. In the book of Mark, the 10th chapter, the 46th through 52nd verse, there was a man. He was a blind man. His name was Bartimaeus. And this blind guy, he needed a miracle, y'all. And when he heard that Jesus was coming that way, by him he was blind. Of course, he couldn't see him, but he heard Jesus was coming. And he began to cry out. Do, 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 do. He used the code. He says, Jesus, have mercy on me. What are we talking about tonight? Give out your code. Give out your code. Just tell somebody else what you do. You don't have to be around when they do it. Jesus was passing by. This man was blind, y'all. He couldn't see, but he heard Jesus, and he said, Lord, have mercy on me. He was so loud. He was so desperate. He was so excited, and he was so enthusiastic that everybody around him told him, shut your mouth down. And I'm telling you, when you start lifting God, the devil will try to shut you down. If he can't shut you out, he will try to shut you up. And the more he tries to shut you up, is proof that God is saying, now I'm speaking my word through you. People told him, shut it down. Don't say nothing. That joker just got louder and louder, though, because he needed help. He was the one that day that Jesus stopped to talk to. Out of all of those people gathering around, trying to see what they wanted to see, Bartimaeus was the only one that Jesus stopped to talk to. The, the, the one that was kind of like, you know, out of his zone because he was praising God. The one that was like out of his class because he was honoring God. Jesus stopped by him. And that man got his sight that day. He started to see that day because he used the password. I don't know what's blind in your life, and I don't know how much you want to see right now. But God will open up to you whatever you've been wanting to see in your heart to help you understand the vision that he has in your life. Yeah. There are people that I know can go to church all the time that seem to be passionless. And passionless people tell you all the time, shut it down. Don't hear the preacher. Don't listen to the word of God. But God stopped to work miracles for people who refuse to stop praising him. If you just refuse to stop praising God, he will stop and make a miracle for you. Sometimes you have to say, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. You, 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 you can help me anyway. But God is passing by. That, I'm thinking about what Bartimaeus could have been saying to all those folks. Stop praising. Stop thanking him. Stop calling on Jesus. And Bartimaeus is like, y'all shut up. Shut up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you, wait a minute. Y'all can't help me anyway. But I'm not going to let him pass me by. He's passing right now. And while he's passing by, I, I know the code. I heard somebody gave the code one time. Faith cometh by hearing. And I've been blind, but I ain't been deaf. I know what I heard. I heard somebody say Jesus. I heard somebody call him son of David. I heard somebody say thank you, Lord. And if I can just use what I heard, listen to me. Faith cometh by hearing now. If I can just use what I heard, if I can just use what I heard, and if I can just Shout his name. I'm just one shout away from deliverance. I'm one shout away from healing. I'm one shout away from his resurrecting power. Excuse me. I've got to praise. And I've got to shout my way out of this. I've got to call him his way. And he gave me the code that if I wanted him to enter into me, if I wanted to be in his presence, he gave me the code. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoever you are right now, I don't care how much it hurts, say thank you, Lord. It might not be loud. It might be quiet, but it's your praise. Say thank you, Lord. That's the code. That's what Bartimaeus was trying to tell him. That's why the devil wants to shut you up. Because when you speak, demons flee. People who never have problems, they can't understand why. They can't understand why we pray. It's like this. They don't understand why tears run down our faces and why our noses get all runny. They don't understand why we have to lose control and ain't nobody in the room but you and God. Nobody can understand that. They don't understand how we can shout until we lose our voices and we can talk loud and, and ain't nobody else in the room hollering back at us. But if, you, if, you, if, if God has ever met a need in your life and if you've ever come to the end of your own strength, and if God has ever rescued you, then you understand what I'm talking about. But if he's never rescued you, you just wait. You just keep on. And you're going to remember these words one of these days. The preacher said on a Monday night, just use the code. When is your baby in the emergency room? When is your family in ICU? When is your loved one on the deathbed? When it's you at the end of an eviction, when it's all of your needs trying to be met and you don't understand how you're going to keep your solid peace of mind, you'll use the code. Remember the code tonight. Remember the code. It's just two words. Thank you. Maybe they're getting ready to fire you tomorrow. I dare you. I dare you right now to say thank you. Because, God, when I walk in tomorrow, when I wake up tomorrow, if they call me, if they give me some bad news, I want to say thank you first. I challenge you to stop saying this. That's not my personality. Stop saying that. I want you to just stop saying that's not, that's not who I am. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. If God ever met you at the end of your strength, if God has ever rescued you, you understand praise. Yes, you do. You understand it. You may not be one of those people that everybody wants to be like, but I'm going to challenge you right now to give the Lord praise in a whole new way. You can go ahead and give him your 2020 praise. I, I, I don't know what your praise is. There was a lady, there was a lady by the name of Wilma Rudolph. Some of you young people can look her up later. W-I-L-M-A -L -L Rudolph, R-U-D-O-L-P-H. She had polio in both of her legs, okay? When she was a child, she had polio and she wore braces. But she had a dream of walking. If you're listening to me right now still, do you have a dream in your life? Wilma had a dream. And Wilma used her faith in the Lord to overcome her obstacles. She somehow made the basketball team in her high school. Now, I told you she had polio and braces on her legs. Somehow she made the basketball team in her high school. And she went on in her aggressive faith to eventually win three gold medals for our country. She knew the password. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody right now is having to nurture a child with special needs. Someone right now is having to tend to a mother who's dyslexic and a father who has Alzheimer's and Someone who's feeble, and you just don't know how you're going to do it. One more week. I need to be in church. Well, okay, God says I need the church to be in you, but I need you to use the code. Thank you. There's a Wilma Rudolph listening right now. I don't know who you are, but they said you would never be able to walk. They said you would never be able to run, and not only were you able to run, but God gave you the speed. And he gave you the endurance. Why do you think you're still here? Let me just give you a flash right now. You're not here because you've done anything better than someone else. You're here because you lasted. You've endured. 
And that's what the enemy wants to fight about. 30 years now we've been in ministry. Come on, that's endurance. People don't usually stay in church longer than three to five years. We move around. But we've learned the code. Thank you. And every time we've been down, God said, while you're down, what are you going to say? I'm going to use the code and get up. Thank you. I just have to keep saying that because of all we can pray for. You just got to say thank you. Got to use the code. You, 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 you can't be passive if you, got to, if you want to see a miracle in your life. You, you just can't. You got to get aggressive. And you got to believe the God of promises. There was a guy named Elijah. He lived in a, in, a, in a time where there were a whole lot of false prophets. A lot of idol worshipers. A lot of psychics. And he was surrounded by doubters. He was surrounded by unbelief. This guy Elijah was surrounded by a lot of unbelief. But he remained enthusiastic about his faith in God. And so he challenged all of these false prophets, all of these people who were acting like they knew God. He, he challenged them to a showdown at Mount Carmel. And Elijah, he was so enthusiastic. I didn't say charismatic. He was so enthusiastic. Yes, some folk want to get loud because they want to be seen. But God said, I want you to be enthusiastic so I can show you my strength. He was so enthusiastic about his faith in the Lord that he prayed and God sent fire down and burnt up the sacrifice, the water, the wood, and there were stones that burnt the altar. Now, I, I know I, I went into a story that I didn't explain, so please forgive me. A young person that's listening, this guy, though, he, he believed God so much that God stepped up when he couldn't do anything. Do you know how much strength it takes to shut your mouth and God says, watch me work this out. When God sees you, praise him like tonight, like you just did. I mean, you, it may not have been big for you. It may not have been loud. It may have, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but you were obedient. That was what you just did called a, a, a sacrificial thanksgiving praise. And worship. That's what you just did. And it was mixed with faith because you, nobody was looking. Nobody saw you. Nobody was watching you. You weren't doing it to show out in front of anybody. And I want you to know right now that God's going to send a fire into your life. You just gave the biggest offering that you could have given. You gave an offering of joy. Nobody just saw you walk around. You didn't get a chance to ask somebody to change $5 or $100 or oh, you're going to be a part of the $1,000 group. You're going to be a part of that regardless. But what you just gave God now Set another fire to your life. And it'll burn every trace of apathy away. It'll burn every trace of unbelief away. And if you've been a lukewarm religious person in your soul, it'll burn that away. If you'll just be enthusiastic in your faith and learn how to offer God a sacrifice every day of saying, thank you, God. He'll move in that hard place in your life. Whatever's hard, he'll move on it. If you just remain enthusiastic in your prayers, if you just remain enthusiastic, I mean inspired by God. Remember, that's what enthusiasm means. It means to be inspired by God. If you, if you just remain enthusiastic in your life, God's anointed will will clear out your enemies. Where do they go? I don't know. Enemy may come at you one way, but God will cause that enemy to run in terror, the Bible says, seven ways. But you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to be persistent. You can't just do this tomorrow and stop. You can't just do this tonight and stop. Persistence defeats resistance. You just got to keep saying thank you. You got to be persistent in your praise. When it doesn't look like you have anything to give, ask somebody, can you give me $2, two pennies? Because I got to be persistent in my giving. And, and so I can cause the enemy to be defeated. I, I, I don't have but a dollar. I don't have but a nickel. But I got to be persistent. I got to keep doing it and cause the enemy to be defeated. And persistence in praise and worship is going to remove the, the hindering parts of your life that are causing you to fall out with people. 
if I just stay persistent, even when people don't like me, God says, I got you. And at some point, you're going to have to know who your enemies are so I can go ahead and make them your footstool. You can't get higher without them. Get enthusiastic about God. Why, Pastor Rush? Why? Because he's about to deliver you. Again. He's done it before. He'll do it again. And he's the same God that delivered you before. And you just got to keep telling him, thank you, God. There's a scripture that I want to leave with you in 2 Chronicles 20 and 22 in the Message Bible. And it kind of describes what happened when there was a war going on in the Bible times. And just for the sake of time tonight, I just want to read it because I want the young people to be able to, I want you to be able to get off tonight and just go and practice your praise and practice your code. But it says in 2 Chronicles 20 and 22, as soon as they started shouting and praising God, God set ambushes against the men of Ammon, Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir as they were attacking Judah. And they all ended up dead. They were going after the people of God. They were trying to destroy the people of God. They were trying to stop the people from praising God, from going to worship God. And God set ambushes among them. And the Ammonites and the Moabites, Moabites mistakenly attacked those from Mount Seir. They fought each other and massacred them. Then further confused, they went at each other. And they all ended up killed. When you use the code, God says, those that come at you, you just stand behind my word. Get enthused. God's about to deliver you. Get excited because he's about to heal and deliver you. Get excited about it. Praise him with exuberance because he's about to turn your situation around again. And some of you listening tonight, you've been in God too long to think that God won't do it. He's looking for people who will praise him no matter what. No matter what they're going through. Can you speak through it? Can you sing through it? Can you teach through it? Can you preach through it? He's still searching for somebody who will shout to him. Even if it looks as if they're blind and if they're lost. He's looking for men and women of faith. You got to thank him. You got to thank him like you want him. You got to thank him like you need him. You got to thank him like you love him. You got to thank him like you're desperate. You got to thank him like you're trying to save your life and somebody else's life. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's exalt his name together. Thank you, Lord. Tonight. You may say, God, I want it back. I, 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 I did. I lost it. I messed up with it. I, I stopped going. I, I, I almost stopped believing. But tonight, you just spoke to me right now. And if that's you, all I want you to do right now while you're looking at that screen, while you're looking at this picture, while you're looking in this Monday school, wherever you are, you, you just right now while you're there, just open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you for another chance. And Lord, I want to come back. I need to come back. When I needed a word, the church was there for me. When I needed deliverance, the church was there for me. When I needed help, the church was there for me. When I needed salvation, the church was there to teach me. And now, God, I need strength. And let me be there for the church. And let the church be there for me. Amen. I want to thank everybody for listening tonight. Yeah, I miss you being here. Oh my gosh, I miss you. 
I'll never take advantage of one person being in church or take it for granted and not another day of my life. From the noisiest person to the most running baby to the person who could sit on the second row and snore, the person who got to get up and leave early, the person who comes in extremely late. God, I just thank you for all of them. And God, thank you for letting us see it again. watching and for being bold and unashamed looking for even more content from ibach and pastor ricky g rush make sure you're following ibach and pastor rush on facebook twitter and instagram for even more info right at your fingertips the new mobile app is available for ios and android in the itunes and google play stores and don't forget that an important part of accomplishing god's mission are the tithes and offerings we receive from faithful viewers just like you won't you make a difference and become a fisher of men, supporting the ministry work of IBOC and helping us change thousands of lives all over the world? Visit us online at ibachchurch.org or on our mobile app to make your donation. You can also give through Givelify in just a few short steps. Thanks for your support. That's it for now, but be sure to tune in next week for another powerful message from the Master Illustrator, Pastor Ricky G. Rush.